Today we're going to be talking about the equation of a sphere, and in this particular video we're going to be dealing with two separate types of problems related to the equation of the sphere. In the first one we're going to be finding the equation of the sphere that passes through the point 4, 3, negative 1 and has its center at the point 3, 8, 1. And then in the second problem, we've already been given the equation of the sphere, and we're going to use it to find the center and the radius of the sphere. As a reminder, I've written the equation of a sphere in standard form here. This should look really similar to what you remember from the equation of a circle when we were dealing with only two variables or two dimensions. Remember that our formula for the equation of a circle was exactly this equation here, but for this quantity z minus l squared. That's the only part that we've added. When we move from two dimensions or two variables to three variables, and we add that third dimension of z, we just add to our equation of the sphere this quantity z minus l squared. That gives us the equation of a sphere instead of the equation of a circle. So we're gonna be using that to find the equation of a sphere given these two points here. So we have these two points. The sphere we know passes through the point 4, 3, negative 1 and has a center at 3, 8, 1. Well, remember when we were dealing with the equation of a circle, we knew that the center of the circle was at the coordinate point hk. Now we know that in three variables, the center of our circle is at the point hkl like this. So all we're going to do is plug in the coordinate point, the center here, 3, 8, 1, for h, k, and l. What we're going to get then is x minus 3 squared plus y minus 8 squared plus z minus 1 squared is equal to r squared. So we've done everything except that we need to find the value of the radius over here. This our value on the right hand side represents the radius in the equation of a sphere here, the formula for the equation of a sphere. Well, how are we going to find the radius? The way that we're going to do it is using the distance formula that allows us to calculate the distance between two coordinate points in three dimensional space here. So remember that our distance formula says that the distance between two points is equal to the square root of, let's go ahead and call this point 1, we'll say 1 here, and we'll call this point 2, like this, we're going to say x sub 1 minus x sub 2, or in other words, 4 minus 3 squared. It doesn't matter if you do 4 minus 3 squared or 3 minus 4 squared if you do this center point minus the first point or the first point minus the center point, as long as you're consistent. So because we did 4 minus 3, we're going to have to do 3 minus 8 for y. So we'll say plus 3 minus 8 squared for y, and then plus negative 1 minus 1 for z. Negative 1 minus 1 squared for z. We keep it consistent. We always subtract the value in this second point from the value in this first point. We keep our x's, y's, and z's together. So if we simplify this, what we see we have here, 4 minus 3 is 1, squared is just 1. 3 minus 8 is negative 5, squared is 25, so plus 25. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, squared is 4, so we get plus 4 like this. What we see then is that we have 1 plus 25 plus 4, which is 30, so that the distance is square root 30. What this tells us is that the radius is the square root of 30. But if we're going to plug that in to the formula for the equation of a sphere here, we're going to get square root of 30 squared, because we plug it in here for radius, which is just going to give us 30. So the equation of our sphere is going to be quantity x minus 3 squared plus quantity y minus 8 squared plus quantity z minus 1 squared is equal to root 30 times root 30, or just 30. That's the equation of our sphere, which we found using two coordinate points, one of which was the center. Now, if we want to use the equation of a sphere over here to find the center and radius 
all we need to do is group our variables together and then complete the square for each one so that we have a perfect square on x, y, and z, and then we'll be able to pull out values for h, k, and l to find the center. The radius will be over here on our right hand side. So we're going to manipulate this equation. We're going to pull our x variables together. We have x squared and negative 2x. So we're going to get x squared minus 2x. Then we're going to add to that our y variables together here. So y squared and then minus 4y. We put those together. Then we're going to put our z variables together and we're going to get z squared plus 8z. And we have 15 over here on the right hand side. So we just grouped our variables together. Now remember when we complete the square, all we need to do is grab the coefficient on our first degree term. So in the case of x here, that's negative 2. We take whatever that value is and we divide it by 2. That's going to give us negative 1. Then we take that value and we square it and that gives us positive 1. That's what we're going to add to this x squared minus 2x to complete the square. We're also going to have to add it to the right hand side when we add it to the left hand side. So this is going to be the value we add to x. For y, we're going to take negative 4 here, the coefficient on our first degree term. We're going to get negative 4. We're going to divide it by 2. That's going to give us a negative 2. We're going to square that, and that's going to give us positive 4. So that's what we're going to add to our y term here. Then for z, we're going to take positive 8 here. You always take the sign on that coefficient. So we took the negative sign in the case of x and y. Here we have positive 8. We're going to divide that by 2 and get 4, and then we're going to square that value, and we're going to get 16. So that's what we're going to add to z squared plus 8z. So when we do that, here's what it's going to look like. We're going to get x squared minus 2x, and we're going to add 1 to it. So we're going to add 1. Then we're going to get plus y squared minus 4y plus the value we found here for y plus 4. Then we're going to say plus z squared plus 8z plus the value that we found for z, which was 16, plus 16, is equal to, now we have to add all three of those values that we just added to the left to the right. And we already have 15 on the right. So we're going to get 15 plus 1 is 16, plus 4 is 20, plus 16 is 36. So we're going to get 36 on the right hand side. Now we just want to factor the left hand side into perfect squares. So if we factor x squared minus 2x plus 1, what we get is x minus 1 times x minus 1, or just quantity x minus 1 squared. For y here, we're going to get y minus 2 times y minus 2, or just y minus 2 squared. And then for z, we're going to get z plus 4 times z plus 4, or just quantity z plus 4 squared. That's what completing the square allows us to do. It's going to give us these perfect squares for x, y, and z. And then over here on the right, we have 36. Okay, so now that we have the equation of the sphere in standard form, we can really easily pull out the center. So if we look at the formula for the equation of a sphere here, we know that the x value of the coordinate point that represents the center point of this sphere is h. So we're looking for this value right here, h. And if we look at our equation, we can see that that's right here. The value is 1. The value here of k, the y value of our center point, we know is 2. The value here of L, the z value of our coordinate point that represents the center, is 4, except that in the standard form we have z minus L. In our equation we have z plus 4. So what we really need to do is call this z minus a negative 4 and pull the negative 4 as our z value. We always have to have this negative sign. So if you have a positive, you need to make sure that you pull the negatives out. You get z minus a negative 4, and you pull negative 4 as the center point. So our center, we'll just call it center, is going to be at 1, 2, negative 4. That's our center. And then our radius, of course, our standard form tells us that the right hand side is the radius squared. So our radius is not 36. It's the square root of 36. Our radius is going to be equal to 
positive six. You don't need to worry about positive or negative six because a radius, since it's a physical distance in physical space, can't be a negative value. So our radius is gonna be positive six. So that's how we take the equation of a sphere convert it to standard form, and then pull the values for the center and the radius of the sphere out of the equation.